I've never been the biggest fan of Logic Pro. But then something weird happened. Logic took two of Ableton's iconic features and somehow made them actually better. One of them so good, it's magical. So in this video, I'm gonna show you the two things that Logic Pro improved that Ableton is famous for. Ableton Live's warping is legendary. Drag loop in, boom, it's in time. Well, there's actually a problem not many people talk about. If your loop isn't a perfect length, meaning not an exact amount of bars, initially, the timing gets completely messed up. You have to dive in and adjust warper markers, and yeah, let's face it, that's pretty long. And if you're new to Ableton Live, that can be a little bit confusing. Let me show you the problem. So here's the song I've sampled. If you listen, it doesn't start exactly on the beat. Now, before I drag this into Ableton Live, I need to ensure one setting is turned on. If I press Command, comma, or Control, comma, on Windows, go to Record, Warp, and Launch, and ensure you have Auto Warp Long Samples on. Let's now drag in our song. Now, if I play this with the metronome on, let's hear how it sounds. Not quite there. <laughs> That's where logic comes in. Let's see this truly magical thing logic does. Okay, so here is logic. And as default, there's no actual like warping applied. But if you go up to this area here, it says keep. Click on this, we have a smart tempo project settings setting. <laughs> Click on it. There is this thing here, set imported files to align bars and beats. This is where the magic happens. Now, if I go to my song, drag it in. Now, remember Ableton at first, it was kind of close, not so close. I went in to adjust the warping. A mess. Now in Logic, Boom, everything just locks in perfectly straight away. There was no adjusting warp markers because it just works. It's magic. Now, because it's so easy and so effective, I don't waste any time. I just take it straight into Logic, turn that setting on, export it and put it back in. Now, something to say that this is a project-based setting in Logic. So every time you open a new project, you will have to set it. That's the only downside to it. Now, Ableton Live Session View is iconic. There's no timeline. You just press play on loops. You have the freedom to sketch, experiment, and perform with no predetermined arrangement. Then Logic copied Ableton's homework and gave us live loops. And yeah, if you've ever tried it, it's kind of bad. But there's one setting buried deep within live loops that is absolutely genius, and I wish it was in Ableton Live. So in Ableton Live, when I want to create a new empty MIDI clip, I just double click on a empty clip slot like this, and it creates as default a one bar MIDI clip. Now, if I want to adjust the length, I have to go in here, then type the length of the clip I desire. Now I have to do that every time. So if I'm creating lots of clips, it will only happen for one bar in this view. Now in Logic's live loops, we can change the default MIDI clips. Check this out. So if I go into Logic here, and if I have a MIDI cell selected like this, I have a bunch of settings that comes up here. Now this might be hidden like this, but you can drop down and open it. Now, if I unselect all the tracks, I get something called MIDI defaults. Every time I create a new clip, this is the defaults it's gonna to refer to. Now, when I go in here, see it says cell length four. If I double click and press two, right click to create empty MIDI cell, it's now two. I can go and change the quantize settings, the record length, what happens at the end of the clip, and this all gets set as default. So in Ableton, there is no way for us to change that default. We do have a few settings we can adjust that will change the default action of the clips, but not the length. Now, what settings you should set as default in Ableton Live is very important. To find out what settings you need to adjust right away, click this video here and I'll see you in the next one.